welcome back to another podcast. Yes, we yes, are thank back you. again. For another episode with a very energetic uh, Lester Bravo. Yes, so we have another special guest today. Yes, yes. yes. So our special guest for today is so, so mga uh, memory keepers na sumubaybay sa Christio Vlogs before. Parang the guideline is uh, English is preferred. Yes. Oh, I remember the guideline. Ah, oh, yes. So let's, for, let's, oh, for the ones who follow Christian vlogs, there we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, you probably might remember our guest for today. Yes. So, okay. Uh, uh, I'll be the one about to introduce. <laughs> <or>. <laughs> All right. So okay. for the uh, memory keepers, uh, uh, you, this might be a familiar face for you guys. Uh, we did uh, some content before, yes. but I let him introduce himself. Uh, right now, we have a very good friend of the uh, channel, uh, Chef Carlo Miguel. <laughs> uh, Chef, how are you? When was the last time I saw it? I think that was about uh, 2018. Yeah, yeah. About 2018. It, it was around. Yeah, the, uh, the end of 2017, start of 2018, that Twi kind of period. I 2018. 2018-ish, yeah. yes. And, so. and I, I, I remember Chef Carlo, uh, well, the first time we met him, he, he was very uh, uh, helpful in... Because in, uh, we, 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 we went to one of his restaurants, and then uh, we, we tried something out, and then uh, he was very helpful towards Christia and uh, helping us uh, appreciate the burger at that time. But right now, the, the point of conversation is, this is a career talk. Yes. Where we're trying to find out more of the uh, culinary industry. How do you start uh, for the young ones, the, the millennials and the Gen Z, who want to uh, get into this kind of work, uh, what are the things to look forward to? Uh, sir, uh, Lester, are you familiar with the uh, culinary uh, industry? Uh, not oh. actually, but uh, I'm really interested to learn something. Yes. <laughs> no, no pressure ka ba sa English? Hindi <laughs> naman, ha? Hindi naman gaano. Hindi naman. Okay. So, Chef, um, if uh, someone was supposed, uh, or someone is interested to uh, get into the uh, culinary industry, uh, should they be uh, taking something in college that would help them or any, uh, any course will actually help? Okay, there, there's a, a million ways you can actually get into the industry. Okay. Um, there's so many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, college may not be the best route. Oh. Also, if you're unsure, yeah, I would encourage you to just find any kitchen and try get a job or mm -hmm. a stage, we call it, where you sort of intern for them. What, what, what do you call it? Stage. Stage, all right. Spelled S-T-A-G. S-T-A-G, okay. So you, you, you go in there mm -hmm. and you just... Basically, you want to see if this is for you oh. because you don't want to dedicate time in your career or time in your studies to something that you may not like in the end. That's true. So I always tell people, go in mm -hmm. and see if it's something you really want to do or not because it's... So get a it's, feel. It's not easy. It's a very, very difficult Oh, so that's true. So for the young ones, or for the young ones, maybe you haven't seen a kitchen yet. Don't say that you want to get into the culinary industry or the culinary world. So try to, college may not be the best way. Absolutely. Um, for me, the best teacher is experience. All right. Yeah. All right. So any, any, uh, any uh, uh, food business? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if your parents know someone with a restaurant, just mm -hmm. ask them. You know, Tita, can I try? Yeah. Can I yeah. try, see what it's like to work in your kitchen, even one week, two weeks, just to get a feel for it. You get know? a feel for it. So, okay, let's say uh, they, they, they do start to do that, and uh, they, they have a job in, in a restaurant, and then two years pass, and then they're thinking, hey, maybe this is something that I'm, I can be good at. What's the, what do you usually do after that? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I, and I would say don't wait two years. Like, don't if wait it's something years. you look like, you know, do it for a couple of months okay. and just think, okay, if this is something I really want, yeah. then look for a cooking school. Oh, okay. All right. And learn, and learn in a cooking school. Okay. Okay. Uh, but my my point of saying, go to a kitchen and work in a kitchen is a lot of kids nowadays will think, 
Yeah. It looks so cool on TV. You know yeah, what I mean? because there's a lot of reality TV now. It's not like that. It's not like that. <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the farthest thing from reality. Yeah, I mean, it's dressed up to look good on TV. Yeah, that's you true. You know what I mean? Yeah. The cameras so, are there, so it's not it's exactly. not what it, it it's not what it is right so let's say you're already in the kitchen uh you've uh, spent a few months there what what what's the indicator that usually will tell you uh okay i i do like this job you know i i do you know it'll be more like do i want to are you are you excited to go back the next day you know what i mean i got it i, yeah. I think to get into this industry to be a chef you have to be passionate about it okay so just uh, when you go to bed, it's not like you're, you're going to be dragging yourself or you're dreading to come back the next day or you don't want to see that frying pan. So Yeah, absolutely. If, if, you're, if you're like, you know, yeah. six weeks into it and you're like, yeah. you're stressed about going in there and, you know, your boss is getting on your nerves and stuff like that. It's like maybe don't. it's not the industry for you. All right. All right. Uh, straight. I don't think it's for you <laughs> because <Yes. laughs> once you see the stove, you, you, uh, it's not something that you're very interested <laughs> in. So, yeah. all right. But, but for people now who, can it also be a second choice of a career? Oh, absolutely. And I know many chefs who have come to it as a second choice and have okay. done very well. Ah, so all right, but let's go back to to the to the because most of the subscribers, uh, most of the memory keepers are actually millennials and Gen Z. So. Uh, college may not be the best route, but let's say they do go to college, and then I don't know the far as, uh, the, the the course that I can think of that's so far from the uh, culinary world is maybe political science. Someone someone takes marketing or political science, and then all of a sudden they say, no, "Wait, I, I like to cook." You know, yeah, what's exactly. the what's the next step for something like that? Like I said. Go check out the kitchen. See if it's somewhere you want to work in. It's yeah. a fast-paced. It's a hot environment. Yeah. We have fire everywhere. Yep. We have knives everywhere. Yep. We have tempers flaring. Yes. We have a lot so, of egos. So, I mean, it's okay. not for everybody. So, But if they go, this is my home, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I am comfortable with these kind of degenerates, so to speak. <laughs> then... Go, all right. By all means, continue now. To continue. Fi either find yourself a really good chef to mentor you, mm -hmm. or go to a cooking school, go or maybe school. do both. Uh, all right. So let, let's say now for for the the kids, they've decided. Okay, this is for me, um, or or for the people who are having a, a, a change in career, um, they go now to they, they they start to go online and look for a culinary school. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, what's the duration for you to? Because I'm I'm not so familiar. I've, I've never okay, really. Okay, so here courses run anywhere from like six months to I think up to two years. Okay. Okay. Um, I can speak about the way I did it, but yeah. I, I learned and I did culinary in Australia where okay. I grew up. All okay. right. Okay. So there, it was actually. Um, a four-year apprenticeship where okay. you work as an apprentice for five days a week. Okay. And during that time, you go to school one day a week. One day a week. That's So it, I, for me, I wish one of the cooking schools would do that here because I feel it's the best way to train people. Yeah. You come out with the best balanced all-round chefs. All right. So the, the, the one day a week, uh, what's, what's the uh, academic life uh, or, or how does a, a school day look like? Uh, is it similar to uh, regular schools where you go from uh, 8 to 3? Um, we used to be there. Actually, there was morning shift or evening shift. Mm -hmm. So so you, you would either start at 8 a.m. Okay. Or you would start at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., something like that. I don't, this is... This is the, 20 plus years ago. Okay. okay. So uh, how many hours are classes uh, um, in, in so schools like that? So generally you're in the kitchen mm -hmm. for like six hours. Okay. You have a small break. Yeah. And then you go back into a lecture room for like an hour, hour and a half. Ah, uh, okay. So there is a lecture. I was, I was wondering if everything was immediately practical. Uh, the so majority is practical. Absolutely. Majority there is, is practical. Some, you know, they, they have to come with some, some theoretical stuff. Things mm -hmm. like... 
um, management practices and stuff like that that they try to teach you? Uh, so th there's a small concept of, of business and management. Yeah, ab absolutely. And also things like your, um, your templates, so mm -hmm. your recipe templates and your food costing templates and things like that. Uh, so that comes in, that comes in the, in the. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so in, 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 uh, business school, it's like there's business writing, yes, there's legal yes. writing. So yes. they also teach you that. All right. But when I did it, we're talking, there were no computers involved yet. Oh, okay. So there weren't Excel files. It was like, this is how you do a food cost template. Uh huh. And this is how you do it manually. Ah, uh, okay. all right. Because, all right. Yes, that was more than 20 years ago when I did this. Okay. So for someone who's not so familiar with, with the structure inside um, the kitchen, or, or I, don't, I don't know how you call it when it's more professional. Uh, is there a ranking like uh, in in a, in the corporate world? There's a director. There's a uh, there's the chief financial officer. What's the structure inside the kitchen? Yeah. Okay. It's very interesting that you ask that because mm -hmm. the actual kitchen structure mm -hmm. uh, was done like a brigade system. So okay. They, like, it's actually run like the military. All right. So you have apprentices. That's the lowest of the low. Yeah, so if you're not in a system with apprentices, those are usually your stages. Okay. So they're the ones who are there working for very little money. Copy. They're just there to learn. All right. So they start out, when I was an apprentice, I was washing dishes, I was taking out garbage, I was scrubbing, I was putting away all the deliveries. Okay. And then when the, all that was done, mm -hmm. I was in charge of getting my station ready for a service as well. All right, all right. So the... If someone starts off as an apprentice, there is a career path. It, Absolutely. There's always a career path. All right. So they, they don't have to get depressed. It's like, oh, my goodness, all I do is just uh, get the garbage out, wash the dishes. Uh, how long should one be an apprentice? Yeah. Look, I mean, I was an apprentice for four years, mm -hmm. but that's because that's the law in Sydney. Uh, okay? okay. But to be honest with you, if you are interested and you're there to learn, mm -hmm. um, I would say by my, by my second and third year, I was already doing work of chef de parties and sous chefs because I was interested. Um, when the other apprentices were taking a break, I was mm -hmm. like going to the sous chef and saying, what are you doing? How do um, you do that? And they would teach me. Okay, chef, sorry for the ignorance. It's, it's the first time I'm hearing all these terms. Yeah, so we'll go through the ladder, okay? Yeah. So you start as apprentice. Okay. When you are finished your apprenticeship, Okay or you are finished your stage, you yeah. can become a commie chef. So a commie, commie chef, okay. A commie chef is basically your line cook in, a, in, a, in an American system, maybe. Okay. So your commie means you are a cook. Okay. You cook on the line, you do what you're told. All right, you know, all right. So it's so like a foot soldier. Absolutely. Okay, gotcha, okay. gotcha, okay. Then um, the traditional French kitchen is brought, is broken down into Sections. Okay. So the sections they call parties. Parties, okay. So you will have a chef de partie. Okay. Because, so as a commie, you can rat, they don't do it nowadays, but mm -hmm. in the olden days, you would go to a demi chef de partie, which means you're like a section leader. All right. Gotcha. And then you become a chef de partie, which means you are the chef in charge of that particular part of the kitchen. Wow, this is really like the military. Absolutely. Okay, I, okay. I'm following. So, um, you can fact check this for me if you want. Yes, but, sweet. Please fact check. Um, Ho Chi Minh. Okay. Ho Chi Minh came from one of Auguste Escoffier's kitchens. Okay. Ho Chi Minh. Yes. Wow. So he, he actually did his Vietnamese yeah, yeah. Uh, army after the brigade system of the kitchen. Oh, all right. You can fact check that for me. Yes. I could be wrong. Okay. Let's, you let's, never know. Or it could be a, an old wives' tale that the chefs call, tell each other. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. But uh, we'll, we'll let Lester do that. He does take some time. So I uh, will continue but, first. So, yeah, you, when you become a chef de partie, the, the kitchen's broken down. The traditional French kitchen is broken down into a meat station, which okay. is called your rotisserie, and then a fish station, which is your poissonnier, and then a sauce station, saucier. Okay. You know what I mean? Vegetable station, entremetier, and then cold station, garmanger. So uh, you have all of these, and you have a chef de partie in start of each copy. one of those stations. Sorry for for I have to juxtapose it with, with the um, the how it's done in the military. So it's like you have a navy, you have your marines, you have your Absolutely. air force, but just different food sections. Yes. 
All right. So but they still all have to come together under the sous chef. Under the sous chef. And you may actually have a sous chef for, you know, if it's a big organization, you yeah. might have a sous chef that only takes care of two or three or two or three. Okay. Which goes into the head chef. Okay. So which a would be, or the executive chef. All right, so a sous chef is is like an XO or a second in command. Sous chef is your second in command. Absolutely, he's your number one guy. He's the one who dies on his sword for you every <laughs> night, but gets no glory. Uh, so uh, does does it happen that the sous chef takes one for the team when something doesn't work out? Does absolutely, that's his job. That's his job. So if there's an angry uh, uh, customer there who doesn't like the food, it's the sous chef who'll take the bullet for you. Absolutely, that's his job. Okay, so we won't recommend. But the sous chef. But it, you have to do your time as a sous chef before you can become an executive chef oh wow it's so interesting in the kitchen i see the food and i say oh okay it's good or bad i'd, I'd never really appreciated everything that goes behind i mean behind those kitchen doors yeah but the thing is you have to remember you're feeding people yeah you don't want to kill anyone yeah you don't, <laughs> you don't want to kill. that's true though <laughs> we don't want to kill anyone absolutely yeah right? so yeah. you have to, you have to judge yeah you know you have to do it with the utmost of respect and okay you know you have to do it properly properly okay so let's uh, let's uh, have a little realistic take to it let's I, i'm my, i'm 42 years old right now all of a sudden i get the bug tomorrow and i say hmm i think uh, maybe i want to be a chef don't and do it don't do <laughs> it's too late it's don't too late it. it hurts now to spend 16 hours a day on your feet oh so this is a real take on it if at my age i decide all right Look, I can do anything I set my mind to. I want to be a chef. I'm 42. Can it be done? It can be, but it will be very painful. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. It will be very painful. How, how so? Well, how often, how, when was the last time you spent 16 hours on your feet for a day? I don't know, actually. I'm always seated. It's not that I'm privileged, but it's I, I do it's, uh, it's work. Job, right? It's my job, yes. yes. But 16 hours, I can't remember. There are, there are no chairs in kitchens. Oh, all right, all right. Sometimes, so you know what, when I'm in SMR, I used to see the parking attendants without any chairs. And I was thinking to myself, wow, who would do that? Can't they give them it's any chairs? It's even chair? worse because you can't walk anywhere. Yeah. So in the kitchen, you... 16 hours. And you're moving around, and it's hot, and it's sweaty. Okay. And uh, it's, it's, very, it, it's a very difficult life. Yes. And also, in your work, mm -hmm. in your work, mm -hmm. you have deadlines, right? Yes, I have to we get do. this done by Friday. I have to get this done by Monday. That's true. Uh, this, this I need to have done maybe by this afternoon or something yep. like that. Yep. We have deadlines, immediate deadlines. Every hour. No. Minutes. Minutes. I have to have this done in two minutes. I have to have this done in a minute and a half. I have to, have the, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so it's immediate, fast paced deadlines constantly. So your culinary life can be over within hours if, if you're just one failure after the other. Well, in one, in one kitchen, yes. You can try another kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it's so cutthroat. I didn't realize that the, the, the profession is so cutthroat. I thought the legal world or, or uh, other aspects of the military was so cutthroat, but it, it seems that this is a very, there's very little room for error. Um, well, here's the other thing. I mean, the more you screw up, the mm -hmm. less you get paid. What? Well, oh. think about it. If, if, I have, if I have a cook who keeps messing up a ribeye mm -hmm. steak that's, that to oh, me costs 800 pesos. That's true. What am I going to do? That's true. He Come. screws it up once. I'll show him again. He screws it up twice. Mm -hmm. He's paying for it. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Chef, I'm, I'm getting intimidated by you. If, uh, if I, 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 I wanted to uh, start and uh, I don't even want to go in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> It's scary. But all right. So for 42. All right. Guys my age, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I think I, he makes a lot of I'm, point. I'm your age. Yeah. I'll be 42 in a few months. Yeah. So But you're already established, yeah, right? Yeah, and I'm used to being on my feet for a long time. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. But I've been doing it since I was 15. Since you were 15, wow. So that's uh, that's, that's not passion, that's love. No, it's my life now. It's your life as well, right? So Uh, what's the ideal age? What would you recommend? If, if, if the so earlier, the better. The, the sooner early. you get into it, the better, because you are taught. Like, I will. I would say that mm -hmm. I grew up in a kitchen. 
you know, I went into it as at 15 years old. I didn't really know much at a fi- as a 15 year old. Yeah. I grew up in a kitchen, so I grew up in the ways of the kitchen. Okay, I want to get into that. At 15 years old, yeah. What what made you? Uh, what, how how did you end up in the kitchen at 15? And we're talking about working already. Yes, yes. Right. right. So, what? Well, well, how did you end up in that situation where you're in the kitchen? You're 15, and did you already realize that this is something you yeah, love? Yeah. So, um, in Sydney, we have a very nice program. When you're around 14 years old. Mm-hmm or it's somewhere in the midway of grade 10. Okay. So summer 15, summer 14. Yep. You go and you do this, pro- this, this program called work experience. So what okay. you do is you have to go and find a job for two weeks during, your summer, during your, one of your breaks, like Easter break, I think, or something like that. Okay. You go, you find a job, mm-hmm. and you work at that job. All right. And then... You have to do a report on what you did and all of that. So it's so that's like, what it because in Sydney and Australia, mm-hmm. at the end of grade 10, you have the option to leave school if you don't oh. plan to go to university. Oh, all right. I didn't know that. Okay. If you do not plan to go to, mm-hmm. because grade 11 and 12, it's like the K to 12 system. All right. But you have an early out option. Wow. Because 11 and 12 are geared towards which university course you can qualify for. You can't just say, I'm going to do medicine you need to have the grades to do medicine. And that comes on the assessment of the two years prior to graduating grade 12. Okay, that system actually works, right? At least yes. you, you, you'll be pointed in the right direction Absolutely. immediately. If you do not have the grades, you cannot do law, you cannot do medicine. You just can't. All right, all right. You need to be literally in the top 0.6% of your entire state okay. to qualify for medicine. All right, okay. That... The, I hope we can do that here, but uh, you know, it's up to you, Dex. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but that really sounds like a, a system that works. Okay, so you were 15 and you found yourself in. Yeah, I, I was like 14, and I found 14. myself in the kitchens of a five-star hotel in, okay. s- in Sydney. Back then, was the Regent Hotel, which was bought okay. and taken over by Four Seasons. Okay. So it's like it's a five-star one of, and it had one of the best restaurants in the city at that time. We're talking very early 90s. Okay. Okay. All right. It's 1990, 1991, something like that. All right. Okay. And I was in their kitchens and I just loved it. I was like, well, I have these to, guys were like, you know, it was like yeah. they were all rock stars to me. You know what I mean? I have to ask, what's the one thing that immediately you realize? Wow, I love being here. Um, okay. They were, well, it, it goes back a little bit further because, you know, um, my mom was doing catering of Filipino food yeah. from the home, okay. from our house in Sydney. So All she right. would cook Filipino food, sometimes for pickup, sometimes yeah. for catering okay. from our house. All right. And, you know, I'd get home from work and there'd be like 20 kilos of beef on the counter. Yeah. And I'd just get a knife and start helping her. So I had some oh, going into this. I had, you know, I 10, it. 11 years old. I already knew how to chop things. I, I had some skills already. All right. So when these guys in the hotel saw it, it was like, hey, this guy from high school knows how to do yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. They were like, okay, uh, we'll put you in this kitchen today. Yeah. And it was the staff canteen yeah. For, yeah. The, for the hotel. Yeah. I had to feed like 500 people. And they're like, okay, um, go in the pantry and make whatever soup you want. And you for did. For 500 people. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, I found some of these. Yeah. And there's all these cans, big cans of asparagus. Yep. I'm like, can I use that? And he's like, yeah, whatever you want. I'm like, okay. So we made an asparagus soup with potatoes and stuff like that and chicken stock. And where, where, where did you learn how to do that? Just from your mom at that time? Yeah, just... All right, all right. So uh, bottom line, you were a standout. At that age, so, pe- people yeah, would really uh, see. And yeah. what, what <clears throat> I enjoyed, what, I, what, what made sense to me about cooking was like, yeah. I hated school. Okay. I didn't like being there. I did not like math. I did not like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Probably enjoyed science a little bit because you you do stuff and you get reactions and, you know, it's like, hey, I can go with that. You you look into things, which probably is why I'm a chef as well. Yeah. But, you know, I hated math. I hated writing essays. I hated all of that. I hated school. In turn, you loved being in the kitchen. But when I got ingredients and put them together. Yeah. And it's like. I got egg yolks and sugar and milk and cream yeah. and some vanilla f- beans. And yeah. I was like, ice cream. Yeah. And I was like, wow, uh, that makes so much sense to me. All right. You know, all it, right. It, it just spoke to me. 
and it's like I this makes sense to me. I, I get it. I'm yeah. looking at I'm looking at um, quadratic equations, and I'm going, when the hell am I ever going to use this? That's true. That's true. So, but I was like, but this I can yeah. always now I can always have ice cream. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that's true. So, so immediately there was the, there was a yeah, result absolutely. for you. Yeah, right. A- absolutely, it's probably immediate results as well. There you go. Yeah, but um, I'm sorry. I just need to go back to this because I'm really trying to uh, trying to see if if someone uh, were to start it. Uh, you were saying uh, you, you just discussed the, the the different levels of of how to go up and be yeah, a chef. Abso- absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what was the uh, second stage? I'm sorry for for the your commi. Uh, commi. Yeah. Then a uh, demi. Yeah. So a demi chef de partie. It's like me. Demi means half. So you're like uh, yeah. half a chef de partie. Oh, so you you went through all that. Um, okay. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. The apprenticeship system in Sydney, it's a four-year apprenticeship. Copy, yeah. All so right. um, when I was a second-year apprentice, mm-hmm. I was probably working as a chef de partie already. Oh. When I was a fourth-year apprentice, I was working as in a small restaurant as the sous chef. Okay. 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 So is it like you jump ranks? I did jump ranks, but then as soon as I qualified, I worked for a big restaurant. Mm-hmm. And I went straight into a chef de partie position. Oh, okay. Because the skills oh, actually, were already yeah, there. Yeah, I actually wasn't. I actually wasn't a commie. Okay. Okay. Ever, but I did a four-year apprenticeship. All right. So because the talent is there, the well, skills are there. Well, mm-hmm. basically, um, Sydney's also in a way where uh, salaries are very high. Uh, yeah. You know, okay. Anyone who's doing physical work gets paid very highly per hour. All right. All right. So restaurants are looking to save. So yeah. if they can have this apprentice that they pay like a quarter of what they pay someone else, mm-hmm. do the same job as yeah. someone they're going to have to pay $16, 17 $18 an hour to. It makes more sense. They'll do it. They'll they're do like, it. He can do it. Let him do it. All right. All right. So, and I preferred that. That's why I always stayed in small restaurants. Mm-hmm. I never went into a hotel because okay. I didn't want to get stuck in the basement peeling carrots for, t- for six days. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> that, uh, that would not offer me any excitement. That's for me, true. that's like doing quadratic equations. Again. Uh, that's true. That's true. So you were saying at that time you were already a sous chef. Yeah, but then I, as I, when, I, when, I, when I got all my qualifications, yeah. I went to work at a bigger restaurant. Yeah. And I, took on, I got a chef de partie position straight away without, oh. without having to be a commie. All right. All right. So uh, w- w- when did you become a sous chef? Was it o- over in Australia or what? in in Australia? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I actually worked my way up to head chef in Australia. Cool. I was actually the pastry chef at a restaurant as well okay. because I know how to do desserts. So yeah. I became the head pastry chef at a restaurant, mm-hmm. um, and then head. the sous chef and the head chef left at that particular restaurant, and I became the sous chef. Yeah, yeah. And then after a few months, I became the head chef. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I did. I, got I did it. all. Yeah. I worked my way up to head chef. All right. Yeah. And then. I was 26 years old, and I had no business being a head chef at 26 years old. How I, so? I, I just didn't know enough. Okay. And I right. did, what I didn't know was how to teach people. Ah, uh, that's a good aspect that I want to get into. So what happened <coughs> was I was like the angry head chef because I couldn't express myself properly. I was uh, like a brat. All and right. I was, if I didn't like the way the plate looked, I was throwing the plate in the garbage. Oh, with, with, without saying anything. Or w- w- you would like, try no, to... No, I'd just be screaming at him that it's wrong. That it's wrong. With a lot of profanities. Ah, uh, gotcha. So, all right. Just like a doctor uh, whom, uh, who is very knowledgeable, all that knowledge doesn't work when you don't have people skills. Absolutely. Okay. So when did you start to develop that... Uh, so what, what I did from there was, and I was getting burnt out because mm-hmm. I was so tired and everything was always wrong, so I was always so stressed. And, okay. And, you know, and I, I was ranting and raving and screaming at yeah. people that were like, you know, 10 years older than me. Okay. <laughs> and, and, you know, it was a lot of pressure and I was, wasn't, I, I, I look back on it now. Yeah. This is like 20 years ago. It's like, I had no position. No, no business 15, being there. I had no position, you know, absolutely yeah. stupid well, idea to even take it on. Well, when did you realize, look. Oh, it took me about four or five months. Okay. And on the sixth month, I just left and I traveled Europe for a few months, but two and a half months just to just to relax just to reset unwind yeah rewind then uh, i went back mm-hmm. to a restaurant i went back into sydney and i was like i said okay i, I don't want a position now yeah. i want to go to a restaurant where i can learn okay so i went back to a restaurant that was ranked at the time in the top five and it was the third or fourth best restaurant in sydney okay at the time. yeah 
and I asked them for a job and I said and they're like oh you know we already have a sous chef yeah uh, and the head chef's the owner so I'm like no no uh, I said I whatever you got and he goes well everyone in our kitchen is, is a chef de partie we don't have any commies or apprentices mm. and I said okay I'll take that okay how so long did you do that I did it for like a year and a half, two years. A year and a half. And I learned every single station of their kitchen, and I learned a whole new way of cooking because these guys were right at the top of their game and right at the top of the Sydney game at that time. Oh, okay. So, so you you went there. I went just backwards just to relearn everything. Yeah, you know what I mean. The right way. Not the right way, but just another person's way. Ah, uh, okay. And also to, I guess, to bide my time a little bit and and and. And to figure out how people run their kitchens. You know what I mean? Mm, okay. I obviously wasn't doing mine very well. Okay. So just like any business, y you also definitely take a, take a look at the head of the business and see, okay, is this someone yeah, that I am? absolutely. So right. the owner of this restaurant that I was working at, mm -hmm. he's very much a narcissist. Oh. A, but he's fantastic working with people. Like, I saw his people skills, and I learned a lot from his people skills. What was one thing that stood out that you're saying that, like, this guy really knows how to handle people? Yeah, absolutely. So he would, he would walk into his restaurant, mm -hmm. put a chef jacket on, yep. and walk out to his customers like he'd been working all day, but he, he never, <laughs> never been in the kitchen the whole day. He, he that was like, that was like two minutes. Within two minutes, I've seen him. Yeah. And he'd go out to a table that he knew, and he'd be like, yeah. and he'd just be like, I'm going to take care of your menu tonight. Okay. I'll make you a special menu. How many courses do you want? Oh, we'll do six courses for you and all of that. And he just... Yeah, yeah. And then he'd be sent. Then he'd, walk, he'd march up to the kitchen and he'd be like, okay, this table, it'll be six this, followed by six this, followed by six this, followed by six this. You got it? Okay. Yeah. Let's start with the first one, okay? And then yeah. he'd have his cookbook. Yeah. And he'd send out his cookbook open to the page of the dish that was going to be served to them next. Oh, all right. This guy really had the knew how to handle. And then, he, then he'd be like, mm -hmm. "You can buy the cookbook if you want as well. I'll <laughs> autograph it for you. I'll personalize it." Yeah. And then here's Very, the kicker. Okay. He'd always be gone by the time the bill was pay, was served. Oh, because it was gonna be high. <laughs> it was gonna be Absolutely very high. Wow. So this guy not only uh, he he knew how to work. His, his, uh, the, the kitchen, he knew how to work the customers. He's also very enterprising. Absolutely. And when the bill comes, you don't ever want to come back to the restaurant again. But a lot of people kept coming back. Kept coming back. Wow. Wow. That is, that is a very highly skilled individual. Yeah, so I learned a lot from that. Yeah. You know, I, was looking, I was watching him. I was like, yeah, I don't like you, but I like the way you do that. Uh, how long did you stay there again? Almost two years. Almost two years. When when do you consider uh, in, in the uh, culinary world? When do you consider uh, uh, a duration as staying too long? Uh, should you just be there for six months, a year, when, or it, does someone stay for about four years? It depends on the kitchen. It depends on the food. It depends on your learning curve. Mm -hmm. If you can look at it and honestly tell yourself yeah. that I can't learn any more at this job, then yeah. move on. Ah, uh, all right. So, so the turnover rate is pretty high in the kitchen. People yeah, absolutely. But then, you know, if someone comes to me with a resume that says six months here, six months there, yeah, I likely won't hire them. Oh, okay. You're, you, of course, you're also looking for stability and someone yes, who's. I'm who'd, looking for someone who's going to work. I, I don't want to train someone for three or four months and then have them leave after two months. Oh, I know how that feels. I know how that feels. Right. Yep. Yep. So, is, is that a common thing? In, in that's very common. So. Um, Right now, uh -huh. uh, there's a lot of restaurants opening up, mm -hmm. and there's not enough skilled chefs. I uh -huh. would say there's not enough skilled chefs in Manila. Yeah. So what you've got right now is a lot of restaurants mm -hmm. trying to poach good chefs or good good cooks from other restaurants by offering more money. Wow. I, I actually heard about this. My friend was talking about it, but I didn't know that it, it was very rampant. That it is. It's quite. So it's I, I'm losing people all the time. Oh, so everyone gets pirated. Most Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, Chef, I, I, I want to find out. So, from Australia, you took a break. You uh, uh, went to Europe and then came back. Uh, when was the time that you, you decided, uh, hey, how, how did you get to the Philippines? When did you say that, hey, maybe I want to go to the Philippines? Well, you know, uh, I was actually born here. Okay. So, uh, um, we... We have family here. Okay. So okay. I would always come back to visit cousins. Yeah. 
Tita's, Tito's, everything like that. Yeah. So I, we would, when I was in school, when I was mm-hmm. in grade school, high school, we would probably be back here once or twice a year, uh, every year, visiting right. family. And uh, um, so I got to the point where I was thinking, you know, I wonder what's going on yeah. in the Philippines now, because every time I would come back here, my, yeah. my aunts and uncles would always be like, oh, you're the one who wants to be a chef, right? Okay, yeah. we'll we'll uh, we'll take you to the best restaurants in Manila now. And how was so it? So they were taking me to places like uh, Prince Albert and Le Souffle and stuff like that. So we're yeah. talking about the nineties, right? Yeah, the I, early nineties, late eighties. That's true. I'm sorry. Where was Le Souffle at that time? Was it in 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 Fort Strip? Or I I I'd always I went to the one in Fort Strip. Ah, I also so went a... to I went to this one restaurant in the Ben Press Building beside. Oh yeah, Ben Press in, in Ortigas. Yeah, and it was called Grassy by a chef named Marcus Feller. Yeah, and he's still around, but um, okay, they were talking like late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. I, I I remember those places. I just couldn't afford to go there yeah, yet so at that time. My aunts and uncles, my titos and titos, would be bringing yeah, me to places bringing, like that. And yeah, be like this is this is the best restaurant here in Manila right now. And I I remember thinking. They seem stuck in the 1970s. Oh, so you immediately, you like immediately they were, they saw were still that. putting vegetables across the top of the plate, and yeah. I was like, "That looks like room service hotel stuff in the 70s." So you were thinking, "Hey, I can make yeah. a difference here." Uh, well, you know, that didn't come until a bit later on. Yeah, and um, one of my titos came and visited Sydney. Okay, and he ate at a restaurant. My brother's also a chef, by the way. Wow. Okay. All right. So he ate at a restaurant that my brother and I were running together. Okay. Okay. And, and then so we were like co-head chefs at this that particular is, restaurant. That is so cool. And um, he was like, wow. He goes, there's nothing like this in Manila. Yeah. He goes, there's absolutely nothing like this in Manila. Mm-hmm. And he's like, when you have time, when you can take some holiday, yeah, I want you to bring some of the produce from Australia over. And he goes, what I'll do is I'll pay for your trip to come to Manila. Mm-hmm. I'll pay for all the produce. Okay. Uh, just take one night and do a dinner for me and my friends in my house. All right. I'm uh, like, sure. Well, why not? You know, hey, free holiday, right? Yeah. So you decided to do that. So yeah. So I, I brought some Wagyu beef. I brought scallops from Queensland. I brought, you know, some nice oils and vinegars. And mm-hmm. uh, I brought some truffles and stuff like yeah. that. I brought, and I, I made a really nice dinner spread for them. You know, I did them, uh, I did them like an eight-course menu. I'm getting hungry, but go my ahead. My uncle has this had this very extensive wine cellars with all these really expensive wines from from France and from Italy and stuff like that. So we did wines to pair each course. Cool. And uh, so Tessa Prieto was one of the guests. Oh, okay. And she okay. wrote about it. Wait, I'm sorry. Tessa Prieto is the one of Inquirer. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And she wrote about it in the social pages. All right. All right. And then a bunch of his friends were like calling him, going, "Hey, can your nephew do that in my house?" Oh, okay. So that's the beginning. And I was like, well, I'm here on holiday. I can't now. I don't have any more ingredients. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, mm. and, and about six weeks later, I moved back. Six weeks later. Yeah. It's pretty cool. You no, know, I mean, I was at a crossroads. Yeah. I, was, I was supposed to go in as the opening pastry chef of a new restaurant that was going to open in Bondi Beach. Okay. And I was in a crossroads whether I should do that or what should I do, you know, where am I going? And I'm like... Mm-hmm. So sorry. Why don't we try it? You know. Yeah. So the six weeks when you came back, what was your your culinary direction at that time? Uh, you, you were going to be a chef somewhere. Here. Yeah. Here. No. You, you I um, my parents had actually retired here two years before that. Okay. So I, I literally moved back in with them. Yeah. And I used their kitchen and their house as a base, and I started doing catering. Cool. So I started working. And I started. That's cook- amazing. Cooking for people in their homes. All right, so it's just word of mouth. And, uh, you, yeah, you're absolutely. Starting. But people like I, I was cooking for people like um, GMA. Yeah. And wow. The Aboitis family and. Um, All right. Fred Utengsu was my first paying client. Wow. So these guys are friends of my my uh, aunts and uncles. And All right. The ones who were like, yeah. All right. This is w- so I immediately went through all the circles of the socialites. Yeah, yeah. Working for them and cooking for them in their kitchens. And I'm sure the offer didn't take long for you to head a kitchen. Um, well, I did that for about two years. Yeah. Because I also didn't want to get into heading a kitchen at that yeah. stage. My brother came and helped me for a while because yeah. he was looking maybe he could move here as well. Okay. 
His wife didn't like it here, so he ended up moving back to Australia. Yeah. But um, when he moved back, the business had grown to a level where I couldn't handle it my, on my own. Oh, uh, all right. All so right. then I was like, okay, I'll look for something to get into. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I started with, uh, with a restaurant group, and we opened a restaurant called Metzaluna downstairs. Ah, uh, Where yeah. the Japanese restaurant is now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we opened that, and uh, it just didn't work out in the end. Um, yeah. Yeah. Basically, I think we went into it with different ideas, and I was still, mm. I was still very young and idealistic. So yeah. I, I mean, I, I'll admit to my failures as well. Like mm-hmm. I, I wanted to do something like very high end. I wanted to do something as good as the hotel restaurants or better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Be- because back then there was no serious restaurants outside of the hotels. Yes, it was very yeah, rare. And I, I was think, like, yeah. no, I want, to, I want to be the first big restaurant outside a hotel. Okay. And, you know, I've always loved Italian food, so I was telling him I want to do this modern Italian restaurant that's going to be, you know, yeah. on the cutting edge and all of that. Okay, okay. And they wanted something like Italianis. Uh, <laughs> all right, so the meeting of the minds wasn't really... Yeah, you so guys were for on like two pages. years, we were like... Bashing, yeah. Mm. All right, so for, for two years, you guys were in constant disagreement. Yeah, you know, I wanted to do something like this, and I wanted to do something more high-end. Yeah. I wanted to do, you know, tasting menus of six courses and stuff like that. Right. And they wanted me to put more pizzas and pasta. <laughs> you know so, what I mean? So it, it, was, it was a mismatch. It was a mismatch. They're not bad people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was probably not old enough and not mature enough yeah, to work yeah. with them. Yeah. So, uh, so at that time, uh, how long did that last? So the, for two years, yeah, you guys were constantly... Two years, yeah. All right. So they, they wanted something more, more. what do you call it? More mainstream? Is, is that right yeah, there? More absolutely. mainstream? More, more mainstream. And I wanted to do something more mm-hmm. extravagant. More extravagant. So yes. from that point, where, uh, you, you, you moved to... Yeah. No- so uh, from that point, I actually was looking around and I was saying, what are the best restaurants going around right now? I like it that you always look for the best thing. What's going to challenge me? Because a lot of people will look for a comfort zone. No. So right. what I did was, um, that was the time that Sala Restaurant, Sala Restaurant. Oh, the, the one in PLDT? The one, yes. Yeah, so yeah. that was the time when, because I, I know the owner yeah. and the chef. Yeah. He's an Irish guy named Colin Mackay. Okay. So, uh, sorry, Scottish guy named yeah. Colin Mackay. He, mm-hmm. he, he, lived, he, he was in the process mm-hmm. of moving Sala from Malate to mm-hmm. Makati. Okay, okay. And it already had a very good reputation as one of the best restaurants in the city. All right. I, I think I've seen that restaurant, but I yes. think... I, and I, it still does up to this day have the reputation as one of the best restaurants in the city. So a lot of my clientele from my catering yeah. would be frequenting that restaurant. Oh, yeah. They are so, all from that area, I think. Most yes. of their offices are in well, that area. Boydis area is, the Boydis office is about a two-minute walk from there. Yeah. It's and on Legaspi like Street. You just go there. That's that's and true. So and, and Fred's uh, office is also somewhere just in that they're area. All, they're all around. They're, yeah, they're all very near. So that's why, because I was going to ask you, I remember that restaurant, but I remember going there and seeing the menu and the prices which were just too high for me. So yeah. So um, in when was it? Around two thousand, the end of two thousand seven. Yeah. Yeah, it was around the end of two thousand seven. Mm-hmm. I took over as his executive chef. Wow. For wow. some restaurant, for two restaurants, the restaurant and the bistro. Okay, okay, chef. I have to ask this. I'm actually just learning about everything you've done. Uh, when I met you, you were very down to earth. You were e- easily approachable. Uh, my 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 perception of chefs who uh, 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 who have uh, achieved what you have achieved are usually uh, it's it's someone who's very difficult to approach. Uh, h- how come you were able to develop that kind of personality that you're easily approachable and you even explain, I remember that the time we were eating, you were even explaining uh, uh, the ingredients and it, it was very, it, it, was, it was very casual. I didn't feel like someone, this is someone who's established so many restaurants. 